So I recently went out of town on a trip in my Acura TL. It's a 2000 3.2 TL. And it was a pretty hot day. And I'm driving along with passengers in the back seat. And I come up to a red light. And the car was running fine. And then I start hearing this. at idle speed. And I'm thinking, what is that? Is this someone in the back seat stomping their foot? I knew it wasn't, but that's what it sounded like. And then I thought about it and I thought, you know, this sounds like unburned fuel that's not sparking in the cylinder and it's going down the exhaust manifold and igniting probably where the catalytic converter is under the floor of the car. So I thought, well, this is not a serious problem. The car still drives. I'll just keep driving. The next day I was still on my trip and I was driving again, came up to a light and it started getting a little more frequent. It was like, and I got a check engine light. And so then the third day I was still on my trip and the car started getting a little bit worse and I had a check engine light but now it's a history code check engine light but then of course I got another code and so when you get a first time code you get on this car you get the check engine light and you also get the um, traction control light I think it is you get two lights to get your attention and then when it's a history code, that second light goes away and you only have the check engine light. So when I finally got back from my trip uh, out of town, I plugged in my cheap scanner into the center console, into the OBD2 port. And I got a P0303 code, and that is number three cylinder misfire. So that was probably my first check engine code. And I also had a second code, P1399, random cylinder misfires. So that could be any cylinder. So when I was coming back from my trip, I thought, well, gee, you know, what, what's going on here? Could it be a cracked valve, you know, something serious like that? And after seeing these two codes, I thought, well, no, this is not too serious. So, first thing I did was got my Allen wrench out. I'll put the size I used in the description. And I pulled out all six of my coilover plugs, COP. And this is one of my originals that came with the car when it was new. It's a Hitachi part. Um, and these lasted gosh, a couple hundred thousand miles until the boots started coming off and everything else. So I got new ones from AutoZone. And it shows on AutoZone, the originals are Denso, and you can buy those, they're more expensive. You can get the Duralas ones for about half the price of a genuine OEM Denso. The Densos probably last a very long time, but they only give you, I think, a one year warranty. Whereas, in the car, since I've got 600,000 plus miles on it, I have some Duralast coilover plugs, and they have lifetime warranty. And I've already changed them twice, under warranty, so no cost. I only had to buy them one time. Bought a box of six, and it was like 230 bucks, I think, for a box of six. And so, after seeing those codes, I decided, well, I'm going to get a multimeter out and I'm going to test them. And when you test these things, um, you'll get different readings, cold or hot. And of course, like I said when I was driving, these were, uh, you know, the engine was pretty hot. It was a hot day out. And, you know, normally your, your engine is going to be hot when you're driving. But, uh, so I got my multimeter out. You want to do an ohms test on these. So let me get a multimeter here and show you. So multimeter, this would be your ohms right there. And 
plug in some cables here. And I'll show you what I did using this old one as a test. So we switch to ohms. And when I got my new ones from Autos when I tested them, they're of course cold out of the box. And the spec is 1098, 1099 ohms. Um, so there's three pins in here. Hopefully you can see in there, three pins. And you wanna test your leads just by touching with the ohm setting, touching the different leads there. So let me call these pin number three, two, one. So numbering from the right side, one, two, three, right to left, one, two, three. And so on a brand new one, if you test this, um, and we call this pins one and two, you'll get uh, different readings. So you want to test one, two, and then one, three, and then two, three. So the, the specs I got on brand new, pins one and two, that would be the one on the far right and the middle one, I got 5.92K kilo ohms. And then I got a one and three, the two outer pins, I got 7.02 kilo ohms. And pins two and three, the middle and the left one, I got 1098 or 1099 ohms. So that's what um, a new one is. Now, when I took these out of my car and I tested them, when they were, it, the, the engine was still pretty hot. You know, I got home, let it park for an hour so I wouldn't burn myself because you got to lay on top of the intake manifold to get cylinders one, two, three out of the back. So I pulled them all out and numbered them and tested them. So, um, I found that uh, cylinders um, two and three, when they're when the, it was still hot to the touch, two and three had no reading. Um, so the readings were eighteen thirty two and eighteen thirty seven ohms on pins two and three. So that seemed kind of okay, but when I tested pins one and two and one and three, I got no reading. But on the other cylinders, um, when I was testing them, I got readings on all of them. But so cylinders two and three, no reading at first. When it cooled down completely. I, I took another car, went to AutoZone, traded them all in. Um, but um, when they were cold, before I, before I traded in the defective ones, I finally got a reading. Um, when they cooled down, I got these readings on pins 1 and 2, and then 1 and 3. But when it was hot, there was no readings on those two. So that cylinder 3, that would be my code P0303. And then because I had two cylinders misfiring, that's when I got the P1399. So I put the new ones in. They're all Duralast um, lifetime guarantee. And I'll put the part number in the description. So I replaced all six of them. This Tighten the little screw with my Allen wrench, put the cover back on on the front. Only the front has a cover, so very easy job. Um, started the car up. It ran smooth as silk. No idle issues whatsoever. So your mileage may vary, but in my case, this code was set by first one bad COP and then after another day or so, I had two bad ones, but the car still ran. I still drove it all the way home. Um, while I was in there, you might remember from my prior video when I inspected the spark plugs, I had number one spark plug was a little uh, grayish on the 
uh, porcelain insulator. So I went ahead and just, since these were out, I went ahead and bought one spark plug and replaced that exact same that I had in the other cylinders um, just to rule that out. So uh, spark plugs are all clean and good. The CLPs are all brand new. And these things I had, I'll put the mileage in the description. I think I had 80,000, less than 80,000 miles, somewhere in the 70,000 mile range and I already had two fail. So here's the trade-off. You can get Denso OEM or Hitachi, whichever is OEM on your car, and pay top dollar. Is this going to run you close to five, six hundred dollars, almost six hundred bucks for six of them, and you only get a one-year warranty? Or you can buy the Duralast for like two hundred and thirty bucks for six of them, and then you get a lifetime, but they won't last as long. So. I think I've had Duralast for like 350,000 miles, so I've gotten three sets, four sets of brand new ones at no cost. I just walk in, give them the old ones, they put them in the box so they can ship them back and they give me brand new ones. So take your pick. Um, since I've had this car like forever, getting free parts is always pretty cool. And the nice thing is when you got six coils, one goes out, you can still drive. Two goes out, you can still drive. Um, I used to have a really old car that had one coil. It had a distributor, points, and condenser. And man, if your one coil went out, you were dead. You couldn't go anywhere. So this is a more reliable design, but still not perfect. And uh, so just wanted to throw that out there if you guys have a, a P... 0303 or any last digit number it could be the cylinder P0301 would be cylinder one all the way through six would be P0306. Take a look at your coil because even doing this test, depending if they're cold or hot, an ohms test may not be for sure. And man, I could really tell the difference after replacing all six of them. So, you know, they say you shouldn't have to replace a coil till it fails, but without a really good test, you know, they make a tool that's like a, a, a wand brush. When the engine's running, you can brush over this and it'll trigger a light, a flashing LED light to tell you if it's firing. That may be a better test. I don't have one of those tools right now. So, uh, since I have a free replacement warranty from AutoZone on the Duralast COPs I figure hey what the heck let's change them out again and that was the problem just starting to flake out okay so off these out under warranty AutoZone C1221 Duralast lifetime guarantee I think it's the second or third time I've swapped these so coil over plug just goes right in there line it up Screw in there. Number six hex. Make sure that connects on there and doesn't come back off. Do all six like that. These don't have to be super tight, just firmly in there. And this goes on here. Two screws about a quarter turn. That's all that holds it on there. They're just plastic. And that's it. For the back ones, I get some kind of padding laid on here, especially this metal gets very hot. Maybe some padding here. You might have to use a little step stool or something to get up here. Lay on the engine, put your hand in the back, and do the three in the back. So I just thought I'd mention this. Um, when I had my original factory coil still in the car and I had like 300,000 miles, 
I was also out of town on a trip and I got a check engine light and since that was my first time with this type of a problem I thought oh no what's wrong so I was coming home that day anyway I drove home and found the code and that's when I put in my first set of Duralast COPs and one was bad so I threw it away uh, the original the original Hitachi or Denso, I threw it away because it was bad. And then I took the remaining five, which this is one of them, and I put all five of them in a bag in my trunk along with the uh, hex wrench. So in case it happened again. And when I was on my trip uh, recently, I had five of these in my trunk and I had the wrench. But because I had people with me and it was a very hot time, you know, it was the weather was really hot. I did not want to be changing these on the side of the road. Uh, no garage to work in. It could be done on the side of the road. You gotta let the car cool off so you can touch it. But, you know, I just throw these in the trunk as spares. And in an emergency, if I was doing a cross country trip, I got the wrench, I got the coil, no big deal. So just a, just a thought for you guys. <laughs>